In today's video, I am tackling this hard hit BMW 220 boot lid. As you can see, there's a lot to contend with today. We've got some deep damage, some stretched metal, distorted body line with a very defined crown. We've got crease damage, a split dent, so there's a lot to unpack today. I'm gonna put as much information as I can into this quick video here on YouTube. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget you can subscribe to our channel. Whenever I'm working on a repair like this, I'm gonna start by taking off the interior panels and just checking what axis I've got to work with. Now, thankfully, the panel is fairly open. I've taken out the two number plate lamps, so that's given me some good access holes to get behind that damage. But also, by taking off this interior trim, I can really see what's going on on the inside of the panel. Now, although this damage was caused at the same time, it appears like there's two separate dents. So that's how I'm gonna approach this repair. I'm gonna start by working on the left-hand side, get it to about 90% before switching over to the right. Now, I'm gonna start with a glue pulling process, so I'm warming up the panel to protect the paint and give me a good adhesion between this tab and the panel itself. I'm using a large crease tab, the Gangrene Smooth Series from Black Plague PDR. And because it's a large crease tab, I've got a large contact surface area. So I'm gonna apply a fair amount of glue to the tab itself and then bond that to the panel. I'm starting on the left-hand side of this crease and with a few quick pulls with my slide hammer, you can see the metal start to respond. So quite quickly, I've taken out some of the depth of the damage. Using that same tab, I'm now switching to the right-hand side of that particular crease. I'm gonna repeat that process and continue to pull out that dent. So quite quickly, I've been able to take out some of the depth of the dent on this left-hand side. Now that I've reduced the overall size of that dent, I'm switching to my double bend bar with a plastic screw-in bullet style tip. I'm gonna go through the number plate light access point and this gets me directly to the area behind the damage. Adjusting my line board to make sure I can really read the damage properly and then beginning that process of lifting the lows. Now along with the pushing process, I've also got some tap down work to do. So I'm using our root beer tap down and my hammer and just tapping down some of the highs. So some of these are the original crown that surrounded that initial impact point. And during that pushing process, we also create very small highs that need to be tapped down during the repair process. As with a lot of larger repairs, I spend the majority of my time on the tap down side of things as opposed to just pushing. So relatively quickly, I've cleaned up the dent on the left-hand side of this panel. So now it's time to focus on the worst damage on the right-hand side. Now, because this video here is on YouTube, I am whizzing through fairly quickly. There is a full tutorial of exactly how I repaired this dent damage available within the Learn PDR Online membership. But right now, working on this right-hand side, I've set up a large square glue tab right below that body line. And what I'm gonna do here is simultaneously pull out the low damage whilst tapping down that high crown. So having this motion, this movement, simultaneously makes a huge difference. And that's all about the metal flow. As the dent has pushed the metal in and up, I am trying to reverse that process. So I am applying pressure, pulling my slide hammer to pull the dent out whilst with my hammer, I am tapping down the high spot to push that metal in. So the impact went in and up. I'm trying to reverse that process by pressing it down and out. And as we assess that damage with my line board, you can probably tell I've taken some of the tension out of that crown. There's still a long way to go. I've still got a lot of work to do, but that crown is really hard hit. So by pulling out some of the low below the body line and feeding some of that metal from that crown above the body line down, I'm softening up the metal, making that area a little bit easier to work with whilst reducing that size and ultimately looking to restore that body line back. So I'm going back to my double bend bar. This time I've got an R4 tip with a cherry cap on the end. Some of this damage is really deep, particularly on the body line and that small area just above the two of the 220 badge. So I've got continuous heat during the pushing process here. Now that not only helps to soften up the metal, but most importantly, I'm keeping that paint nice and warm. It takes a lot of pressure, a lot of force to lift out the lows in damage like this. So the paint becomes a lot more likely to crack. Applying continuous heat, keeping that paint warm, keeps it supple and reduces the risk of any of that paint splitting during the pushing process. And then as we take another look across the panel with my line board, you can see I've massively reduced the tension that sat within that crown above the body line. 
So I'm sticking with my double bend bar with the R4 tip and a cherry cap on the end. I've got my heat directly facing this small dent and I'm going to keep that heat running continuously. Now once I know that I've got my tip directly behind the deepest part of this dent, I'm going to start the pushing process really gently just starting to work that dent out. Now whenever you're working sharp dents like this where the metal begins to stretch, you are going to create some shoulders during that pushing process. So often we refer to this as a volcano effect. You find that the inner little low spot, that kind of divot, stays low, but you raise the area around it during that pushing process. Now this is quite normal when it comes to removing stretched metal or deep dents, and part of the process is opening up the dent and reclosing it. So as I start to push out this dent, I am reducing the size of that low, but you can probably just pick out my lines, I'm really starting to create some high spots, some shoulders surrounding that dent. So there's going to be a lot of knockdown work for outlifting this low. Now if you watch carefully, you'll see me moving my root beer tap down in a circular motion around the dent. So I'm trying to tap down all of the high area, but making very sure that I am not tapping down the low spot itself. So the pushing process, I'm only looking to push up the low, but with the tapping process, I'm only looking to tap down the highs. So I'm working around that small low spot, tapping down my shoulders, pushing that metal back down, and that is known as opening up the dent. Once I've tapped it nice and low, I've effectively brought the center of that low spot further up in the panel. So now going back to the pushing process, I can continue to push that low. Now this is a repetitive process, so I'll probably open up and close this dent about five or six times during the repair process. You do have to be very careful when you're working on deep dents or stretched metal to avoid overstretching the panel. Now this comes down to very precise pushes and really being controlled in the area that you're working on. You don't want to overstretch the metal. This can result in a process known as oil cannon. And that effectively is when the panel is weak and the dent itself can just pop in and out. Once it gets to that stage, it's very difficult to work with. Each of your pushes up, it pops the panel out. And then when you start to correct it with a tap down, it pops the panel in. So you're looking to shrink the metal down as opposed to overstretch the metal. Throughout the process of opening up the dent, you'll see me switching tools. So right now I've got a plastic, more pointed style tip on the end of my blending hammer. I'm still using it as a knockdown as opposed to blending, but it's just saved me a little bit of time during the repair process from having to switch tools. And as we take a look at the panel, again with my line board set up, we can have a look at some of my progress. Now it can be a little bit overwhelming, particularly when using a line board, when you can see some of the distortion in the lines. I'm effectively trying to get the overall shape of the panel back in, and then at the end I'll come back with a finishing process and do some of the fine tuning. Right now I'm using my Kiko tap down, and it's a metal to metal transfer. So that gives me a different transfer of energy in my knockdown process. The fin narrow tip gives me some great precision in just tapping down the high spots. And the fact that I'm working metal to metal is a different energy transfer as opposed to nylon, plastic or wood tap downs. So back to the pushing process, I've switched from my R4 tip and I've got a plastic and bullet style tip on here. It's not particularly sharp, I would not consider this a sharp tip, but it's certainly sharper than an R4 tip with a cherry cap on. So now at this stage, I'm a few hours into my repair process and everything starts to get tested. It's a test of your patience and endurance working through the process, but also a test of your accuracy. So whilst I'm still working relatively quickly, I need to be accurate with each one of my pushes and each one of my tap downs. Now if I spot some tension towards the edge of the panel as the panel folds round, I'm looking to tap the tension in and again push that metal in towards my lows. 
And whilst I'm in the tap down process, I'm tapping down the highs that are created during that pushing process, opening up the dent, and also just continually working on any of the tension that was created in those initial crowns. I've switched to my limited light to give me a little bit more detail when it comes to working on this fine dent. And you can see me working just above the two of the 220. Now, if you remember, that's where that little sharp dent was. So I've got the overall shape back, but now I'm really having to get precise with my pushes to finish that dent clean. So once we get to this stage, we're starting to work with some micro lows and some micro highs. Now, if you remember at the start of the video, I said I was gonna get the left-hand side dent to about 90% before switching over to the right. Now, the reason I do that is to get the overall shape right in the panel. So I know that the left-hand side of the dent is not 100% finished, but it's given me enough to know that the shape of the panel is back. Without taking out the shape, then I don't know how much of the right hand side of the dent is affected by the tension and distortion on the left hand side of the dent. Given it's the 90% stage, for me, generally means that I know the panel is in the right shape. Once I know I've got the overall shape back in the panel, I've taken out the crowns, I've reformed the body lines, lifted the lows and tapped down the highs, I've released all that tension, I can then really focus on the finishing stages of the overall area. So right now I'm still working on the right hand side of the dent, the part that was worst hit. Currently, I've got my tip heading up towards the body line, just lifting out some of those lows and getting some of that line back into the shape. But I continually go back and forth over this whole area, picking out any lows that I can see. I regularly move my line board and that gives me a new perception of the dent, new perspective, and I start to re-read the reflections. And then once I'm happy that I've got the overall shape back across the whole panel, I'll go across and finish the repair. Now throughout the repair process, I'm continually reassessing the damage. So moving my line board around and really making sure I can pick up any distortion. I've spotted a little bit of distortion here in the body line. And you can probably pick out in my reflection that just below the body line, there are a few lows. So right now I've repositioned my bar and my tip and I'm just starting to push out some of those lows. Ultimately working back and forth along that body line, making sure that I've got no distortion in the line itself. It can be tricky working on body lines, they can hide a lot of tension. So it's very important to fix the lows in the body line themselves, but also tap down any hidden tension that may be either side of the lows. And then moving on to one of my favorite parts of the repair is the blending stage. So I've got my Shane Jacks blending hammer, a couple of different tips on the end, the domed end for blending, and then the sharper plastic tip for knocking down some of the highs. I've got a bit of distortion around the badge still, but ultimately I'm using a vibration technique with my blending process. Now we're getting to the really fine stages of finishing. So I've switched to a metal tip and this one's fairly sharp. It's still not the sharpest tip, but it really gives me some nice precision and accuracy when I'm picking out some of the micro lows. So again, working just above the two on the 220 badge, you can probably pick out, I've got some very minor texture, some micro lows in my panel. Now this is where that stretch dent was. So I'm really trying to get a nice clean finish here. Now, as I say, the full tutorial for this is a four part series and it's available within the Learn PDR Online membership. But I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. You can subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with every video release we do. And if you've got any comments, any questions, do pop them below this video here on YouTube. I do try to respond to every comment I get. So that's it from me today and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.